Hello students. Welcome to Well Explain. Today I am here with class 7 science chapter number 11 reproduction in plants. And students in this part, this is part 1, we are going to discuss about the asexual reproduction. Now students, look at this figure. This is a diagram of a simple plant and it is labeled means different different parts of the plants are shown in this diagram. Okay, And you have studied in your earlier classes that each part of the plant has its own function to play. Suppose if we talk about the root, the root absorbs water and minerals. Okay. There are two main system, root system and shoot system. The root system consists of roots which absorbs water and minerals. Coming to stem, it gives support to the plants. It supports the all the other organs, leaves, flowers, buds, fruits in a plant. Then comes leaf. Leaf have the function of photosynthesis that means they prepare food for the plants. Now coming to flower. The flower helps in reproduction. This we are going to learn about in our, the reproduction which is taken place with the help of flowers that is the sexual reproduction we are going to discuss in the second part. Now fruit. What is the function of fruit? Fruit contains seeds by which we can grow more and more plants. Now students, coming to the term reproduction. What is reproduction? The reproduction is the process of producing young ones from their parents and these young ones, they are exactly, means that they are of the same kind, means uh, they are resembles their parents. Now reproduction in plants is of three types. First is asexual reproduction, second is vegetative reproduction and the third is sexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, single parent is involved in the simple division of a plant body into two or more parts or the formation of spores. Means the new individual arises from a single parent. Means single individual produces more of its kind. In vegetative reproduction, cell, tissue, a part of an organ or of a plant that develops into a new organism. Means the new plants are uh, grown with the help of the organ of a plant. That means uh, say from the leaf or some stem or roots or any other part of the plant. Or few cells or tissues are taken from the actively growing parts of the plant and they develop. they are developed into new organism and in sexual production two parents are involved in their fusion of male and female gametes they produce zygote which develops into seed so in this part one we are going to study about the asexual reproduction and vegetative reproduction and vegetative reproduction is also known as vegetative propagation so coming to asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is a kind of reproduction in which only a single parent is involved for the production of new organism. It is of three types budding, fragmentation and spore formation. We will be going to deal with these three one by one. The formation of new plants from the cells of a single parent is known as asexual reproduction and you have to study its three types, budding, fragmentation and spore formation. Now coming to budding. Budding is seen in organism like yeast. And what is a bulb? A bud, it is a bulb-like projection which protrudes. Protrudes means it comes from the body of the parent organism. This bulb-like projection is known as a bud. Now this bud continues to grow and finally it detaches itself. Det detaches itself means it makes itself uh, separate from the parent cell. And 
the detached cell continued to grow as a whole individual cell. The new cell formed is an exact copy of its parent cell. Students, actually in asexual reproduction, a single parent is involved. The daughter cells or the offsprings or the new cells which are formed, they are almost exact copy of their parent cell. Now coming to fragmentation. Fragmentation is seen in oscillatoria and spirogyria. As you can see, this is spirogyra. This is an algae. Now in this, what happens? This is filamentous algae. Filamentous means they are thread-like structures. The body of the parent, it breaks, okay, into fragments. And each fragment means if it breaks into three parts, so each fragment will grow into a new indie. Which were clear to all of you. Next, next is the spore formation. Now, spores are tiny spherical single cell bodies which are produced for the purpose of reproduction. They are produced and released from specialized structures of the plant body, and these specialized structures are known as sporangia. This you are going to study in your high classes. These can remain dormant. Dormant means inactive. They remain inactive under the harsh weather condition means when the conditions of weather are not favorable they remain dormant means inactive or sleepy and they grow into a new plant under the favorable conditions examples of these are mosses ferns and fungi this is a fungus rhizopus this is known as bread mold and you can see in the sporangia these bulb like structures which are on the top these are the sporangium and spores grow in this okay and whenever the favorable conditions come they grow into a new individual now coming to next section that is the vegetative reproduction now plants vegetative parts such as roots stem and leaf is used to produce new plants vegetative reproduction takes place in by two methods this is the natural method and artificial method Natural method means it occurs naturally as with the help of roots, stems, rhizomes, bulbs, tubers, combs and leaves and artificially they can be grown by cutting, grafting, layering and tissue culture. Now we are going to discuss in detail one by one. Now coming to stems. Now vegetative reproduction from stems. In this they are subcategorized into runners. Now, what is a runner? A runner is a slender branch that creeps some distance away from the mother plant on the ground, roots itself at the nodes and grow into a new plant. Means uh, these uh, runners, they are the slender branches. Means branches, I, they creep some distance away from the mother plant. Suppose this is the mother plant. They creep and here they will develop roots at the node suppose this is a node it will develop a root from here and a new plant grows here only the examples of runners are oxalis grass velisneria etc now next is the stolons what is stolons stolons are lateral slender branches that arises from the base these are also slender branches but they arise from the base of the stem okay Stolons initially grow upwards. upward grow Then they slowly drop down to the ground. These stem root at the nodes. Here also the roots arises, producing the birds that soon grows into daughter plants. You can see the these are the daughter plants. Examples are wild strawberry and peppermint. Next is, these all are the examples of stem. This is offset. An offset is a horizontal branch that arises from the axil of a leaf. You can see from the axil of a leaf, this offset has arisen. The branch elongates. It elongates to a certain length and then produce leaves at the nodes and a cluster of root fixes it to the ground. Examples are pistia and water lettuce. 
Now, some plants have underground stems also. These are also example of stems. Means uh, these uh, runners, stolen offsets. These were the examples of vegetative propagation by stem. But some plants have underground stems that are swollen to store the food. And they have buds that can grow into a new plants. Examples are tubers, potato tubers, then bulbs of onion and garlic, rhizomes. Examples are ginger and asparagus, water lily and corn. Examples are yum, colocasia, crocus and gladiolus. Okay, you can see from the figure also. This is potato tuber, then bulb of onion and garlic, then rhizomes ginger and turmeric and combs of this is gladiolus okay now vegetative propagation from roots now what happens in some plants like dahlia and sweet potato these are the examples they have swollen roots without any shape you can see these roots they are swollen roots and they don't have any shapes also these roots are called as tuberous roots. These roots have small buds which give rise to a new plant when they are planted into soil. Clear to all of you? Now coming to the vegetative propagation from leaves. Example is bryophyllum. In some plants like bryophyllum, they produce buds from the margin of the leaves. You can see this is the margin of the leaf. And what are produced? Buds are produced here. Okay, they fix themselves, these birds, actually what happens, these birds drop off from the leaves and fix themselves to the ground and later they grow into a new plant. Now, vegetative propagation by artificial method. These runners, offsets, stolons, by root stem, tubers, they all were natural means of vegetative propagation. Now, this veg, uh, vegetative propagation can be done by artificial means also. The first one is cutting. Now, the stem of the plant is cut. As you can see in this figure, the stem of the plant is cut from here. And then it is planted into a new pot or soil. Cut stem eventually develop roots. After some time, it will develop roots and shoots and grow into a new plant. Example. Hibiscus, that is China rose and rose. Now, the next method is grafting. It involves two plants of the same species. Now, in this, two plants are taken. A bud or a stem cutting from one plant is inserted into a groove of the second plant, which is rooted to the ground. This cut part of the stem is called a sion, and the second plant to which the sion is attached is called as a stalk. The grafted areas are then covered with a layer of soil or compost. Means you can see here this is the stalk. This is the sion. They both are joined and they are fixed with the help of means uh, they are tied. Okay. Soon the stalk and Sion join together to form one plant. Plants with thick woody stem can be easily used for grafting. Examples are mango, rose and many fruit bearing plants. So this is grafting. Now next is layering. As the name is suggesting, if the uh, branch is bent down, as you can see in this figure, the branch from this is bent down. Deliberately it is done. Okay. And then it is covered with soil. The remaining part of the branch remains above. You can see the remaining part is above the ground. Once the roots start developing. Okay. New shoots will start to grow from the ground. And the branch is then cut from the parent plant. This layering is often done in plants having slender branches, means very uh, soft branches are there. Patli si tehniya hoti hai, komal si. Unme kiya jata hai. Example is jasmine. Now come, coming to tissue culture. In this method, the growing tips of plants are cut. Growing tips means root and shoot. 
tips are taken the growing tips root and shoot shoot means you can take the tip of the leaves or the branches also they are cut and they are planted in an artificial medium which is kept inside conical flask or test tube you can see in the test tubes the tips are kept the medium provides all the necessary nutrients for the plant growth there is a medium and it contains all the necessary nutrients for the plant growth once the root develop they are planted in suitable soil from here they grow into whole new plants there is this is the new technique uh, the latest technique tissue culture okay now what are the advantages of vegetative propagation the first advantage is that vegetative propagation is very useful for plants grower means plant growers ke liye bahut useful hai why because they can get large quantities of new plants in very short time they don't have to wait for the uh, pollination and fertilization and for the fruit making process and the, when the fruit ripes the seeds come out when seeds are sown and new plants come out this this is a very lengthy process so this is useful for plant growers because it is very quick process the newly reproduced plants the second one is the newly reproduced plants they have the exact characteristics as that of their parent plants means if the parent is very good in bearing beautiful flowers that means the new plants which will be reproduced by vegetative propagation will also have very beautiful flowers third it is very easy to produce a new varieties of plants with required characteristics hame jo bhi characteristics plant mein chahiye acha fruit chahiye healthy stem chahiye badhiya leaves chahiye badhiya flowers chahiye so we can uh, take any characteristics and we can produce the new varieties of plants with the same characteristic with the help of vegetative propagation fourth one is vegetative plants grow faster then the plants grown from seeds and they need less attention during early stages of growth why they need let, uh, less attention because when we sow seeds we have to keep in mind ki whether bird is not eating it or insect is not eating it and it take time for the new sapling to come out of the seed and at that time we have to be very careful with those seeds and the plants which are growing but the plants which are grown with this vegetative propagation they need less attention they need attention but very less attention they need the last one is fruits without seeds such as banana pineapple they don't have seeds so those fruits they don't which don't have seeds the disease in drought resistant plant means agar hame koi special characteristic chahiye jo disease resistant ho drought resistant ho to wo cheeze wo sare plants we can grow using this method that is the vegetative propagation because banana don't have seeds तो अब जब सीड्स ही नहीं तो हम क्या करेंगे और सीड्स वाइबल नहीं अगर होते भी हैं कुछ प्लांट्स के सीड्स तो वाइबल नहीं होते वाइबल मीन जिंदा नहीं होते उनसे हम नए प्लांट्स नहीं निकाल सकते नहीं लगा सकते हैं तो वो सारे प्लांट्स जो हैं वो हम वेजिटेटिव प्रोपोगेशन से ग्रो कर सकते हैं नॉ दिस इज फॉर ऑल पार्ट वन दैट इज द मीन्स ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन इन प्लांट्स ए सेक्चुअल एंड वेजिटेटिव प्रोपोगेशन होप यू अंडरस्टूड If you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe it press the bell icon so that you never miss a lecture when we i upload it have a nice day god bless you all